Uh, I will be posting these slides, and obviously we'll have the recording, so there's going to be a lot of links and things I'm going to go to. Uh, when you actually go and start working on your own module, you can refer back to those in that way. <clears throat> so I'm guessing some of you guys are here because you want to contribute a module. Maybe you're at that point now or and want to do your own module. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is find out how you can help. And there's... Uh, there's several sources for helping. Um, with this session, we are just, I am just focusing on uh, contributing a module, uh, not any the other stuff that you can do. So the focus here is on modules. There's three different types of modules that you can uh, contribute. Actually, there's, there's one type of module you can contribute. There's three types of modules in Drupal. The first is core, which we all know ships with Drupal. Those are the modules that you don't hack. Uh, the one that we're focused on uh, contributed, which is com community... Uh, under the general public license. So anything that you submit here will be open source, of course, with Drupal. And then there's custom, in which case, say, you're creating a, uh, your own website and you want your own custom module to uh, do something special that you're not posting back to Drupal.org. Uh, that would be your custom module. Uh, for every site that we create, we have a custom module on the site so that we can do anything special. We don't use uh, template PHP for anything. <clears throat> The first place you'll want to look if you want to help out with uh, your own module but you're not really sure what you want to help out with would be the Drupal issue queue. And so I've got a link right here. This is where I'm going to be going back and forth a bit. So here is uh, a, this, this link right here. It's on the slides. We'll take you to a little bit of information about the Drupal issue queue, how to use it, you know, what it is, some video tutorials, uh, ways to get notifications on issues. Um, care and maintenance, so you can get a lot of stuff off of here. I'm going to be rec uh, referencing a lot of Drupal documentation, but kind of just getting you guys started on this today. Um, the actual issue queue, which we'll actually take a look at as well, is right here. Um, I've done some filtering, so I have actually have a little bit of junk in my URL here, but it's basically just projects.issues that you want to go to. And you can just filter through stuff on here. You can search for a certain text in anything. Um, you can look under a certain project. Uh, the status, is it active issues you want to look at? Do you want to look at what needs work? Um, most likely you're going to look for stuff like um, priority. If you, want to, if, you, if you want to help out like something right away, you can look for something that's critical. Um, there's some categories here like bug reports, tasks, feature requests. Probably if you want to build a module, you'll look for like feature requests because that means there's not something out there that is, is solving a problem, and that might be a spot that you could uh, jump in. I'm not going to try to do any searches on this, because this takes a long time to load, and my network connection is limited here. <clears throat> um, also make sure that you check who's, when you go into an issue, make sure you check who's working on it. If anybody's already working on a module, you don't want to just start one on, on your own and then overwrite that. And make sure that you check the notifications box if it's something you're going to start working on. So you can see if someone else makes a comment and says, oh, I'm going to start working on this too. And like, oh, I'm actually already working on this. Or maybe work together on that. Um, building modules means you should also be aware of the Drupal API and coding standards and all of that. Because, you know, obviously we want to keep Drupal um, as clean as possible. And that's part of all of our responsibilities as module developers. Um, so there's a great module developers guide on drupal.org that goes through a lot of this stuff. Um, and I have a link here to it as well. You can take a look at that. So this is what that page looks like. And it talks again about the different types of modules. Um, and then of course you've got your, your uh, navigation on the right. And just kind of gives you an overview of the kind of stuff you should probably go through before you start working on your own module. But you don't have to necessarily know everything. You just probably want to know a little bit about about the API in general. Yeah, and it's got some good stuff too on securing code, which is important as well on there. Don't compete, contribute. Uh, definitely don't compete, contribute. You, if there's a module out there that does what you're doing or does something similar, you get in contact with that module developer. Get in contact with whoever's supporting that module and say, hey, you know, this is something I'm thinking, you know, is this completely out of scope of what you're doing or can we kind of somehow come together and work out something that's similar and just upgrade this module. Because otherwise we're going to end up with 
lots of modules that do very similar things. Did you have a question? Oh, sorry. You're, and so you, basically, yeah, you just want to make sure that you're, you do some due diligence to look around for modules that you're planning to build. Um, and don't try to make a better version of an existing module. Jump into that project and make that better. Uh, there's obviously some exceptions to this, but this is kind of the general rule of thumb. It's kind of the same rule of thumb as like you don't hack core, you know, don't make a million modules that do the same thing. Uh, the issue that I uh, found to work on, because this is actually my first project, so I figured I'd share what I kind of have gone through. I literally made this last week, the project itself. Mine is still in staging, uh, but it's, I'm trying to solve the issue with uh, cross-domain XML integration. So if you have, like, if you are supplying data to sites that want to use Flash to access your site, you have to add this cross-domain XML file into your site's root. And that's just a manual process right now that everybody has to do if they're going to share info on their site with Flash applications on other sites. So my, my module is very simple. It's, the purpose of it is just to add that file if you install my module. Um, <clears throat> so what are you, some of the tools you might want to use when you're working on modules, for me, I just, uh, I'm not even at the point where I'm using like staging and stuff. I've just got a development environment. I just use a virtual machine and I install Drupal. And in my project here, where I'm getting screenshots from later, I just installed Ubuntu 64 server on a virtual machine and just got it set up. But uh, I did notice that some of the other developers that I worked with for their sessions had actually used Drupal Quick Start, which I didn't know about, and it's actually really awesome. I installed it last night, but didn't want to mess with everything on here afterwards. But like Drupal Quick Start, I think I have it up on this other slide. Yes, so here it is. Basically, all you do is download this file, and if you have VirtualBox on your machine, it's just a instance of Ubuntu on that virtual box. It'll, you'll just download it, double click it, and it'll install in your virtual box. And it'll look like something like this on mine. So here's, um, I think it's this one. And so it just automatically installs itself on virtual box. So you open it, and somebody else already went through all the fun of configuring it for LAMP, Apache, Git, Drush, like everything you want there. So you don't have to mess with anything, and it even comes with two pre configured Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 sites. So you can just jump right in. It's a great idea to use that to, uh, if you want to test something out, but you don't want to touch even your development box. You're just like, this is an idea I have. Create a virtual box. This is a great environment to use. But whatever you want, use a virtual box and just mess with it. And then destroy it. If something happens, oh, well, it's too bad. Done. Just create another one. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I know this is old news, but I'm excited. You know, again, I'm, I'm newer to this, so this is exciting stuff for me. Um, so let's go back to that. Uh, to the project that I'm uh, working on. Uh, what is it? We just kind of talked about that a bit. It allows Flash or other services to use your site resources uh, based off an XML file. It's Flash looks for this XML file on a site if it's trying to grab something from that site. Maybe it's trying to grab images from my site to load into that Flash file. It's going to say, hey, do you have this file? Am I allowed to touch your site? OK, I am. Uh, it's obviously not going to solve any firewall issues and stuff beyond that, because I mean, there's obviously hacks around that. But this is just generally for this. Uh, cross-domain XML file. So let's take a look at the issue queue that I found for that. It's this one. Here it is. So this is the issue that, this is where I actually found the, uh, where, where everyone was kind of asking for it. It's like, hey, this isn't here, you know, and there's a bunch of comments going down, like, nobody seems to have solved it. There was some, some patches that went in. Um, looking down still, July 17, 2010, nobody solved it. Coming down to the last comment, uh, August 18th, 2007, still not solved, a couple of patches. So it's definitely like ready to be um, for a module. <clears throat> so I also have another uh, little thing I brought up that kind of explains that a bit more. So, so I can explain this a bit before I show you the module. Um, so here's like an example flash. Um, let's see, what is this site? Uh, active touch. So. Anyways, I just looked for something on a help file. Uh, what is a cross-domain policy file? Kind of explains that, what, we, what I just talked about. What does the basic one look like? I don't know if you can see that. But this is basically what it is. It's like anything on the site where it says domain star, anything on the site is available to anybody who wants to connect to it with Flash. Like if this just says go for it, it's all yours. And that's the uh, kind of the default uh, most people are going to throw in. Uh, you can specify certain domains if you want to get a little crazier and say, well, only example.com can use data on my site with a flash file. Or 
maybe only star.example.com. So you can be very, uh, you can use wildcards as well. You can even specify an IP address. Um, there's a little bit of talk here on remote applications. So you could see there's all these specialized things. So the idea of my application or my module is to just do something in general, but provide a hook as well. So whatever your custom module is on your site, you can say, well, I also want to be specific to maybe this set of, you know, cross domain or this set of websites or this set of domains can access, uh, can be accessed by Flash or whatnot. And you can even go down to granular control of subdirectory. So it's like, okay, well, this directory is available, this directory is not, and you just provide different uh, files on that. <clears throat> so let's uh, take a little bit of look into my module. And first thing we have, and I, I'm sorry, I, I did take screenshots. I was able to get that ahead of time, but I wasn't able to get my virtual machine connected to the internet, so I didn't want to mess with it here. So I'm going to just look at these screenshots. So let's take a look at my modules info file that I created. Now, uh, the first thing to notice on the left, I took a screenshot of my Coda. I use Coda, if anybody knows that, but it's just an editor. Anything works. So I've navigated in, SFTP'd in, and I've got my stuff on the side here. I'm in Sites All Modules, and I've got my cross-domain XML uh, folder. And in that, there is a cross-domain. I'm sorry I didn't expand this here. It's, it is on another slide. Uh, in there, I've got uh, my info file's got name, cross-domain XML. What do you want to call it when you look at the modules files on your website? Uh, description. Same thing on the module file. And I didn't include package, so it's just going to go into other. When you look at your site's your, uh, admin interface, you go to modules. You scroll down, you'll just see other, you'll see this. And of course, I specified this will be Drupal 7 only and up. Uh, let's take a look at the actual module file. <clears throat> let's see. Is that horrible? Hopefully not too bad. Okay, um, so I've got a couple of, it's a very basic module, a couple of things. I got my hook menu, so that when another site actually tries to get that exact file off my site, this hook menu will fire. And then this hook menu will also say, oh, well, access arguments, if, if you guys are familiar with that. So it says anybody who can access content. So that's pretty much anybody. And then that'll fire off um, my cross-domain function, which will uh, call my theme function for this module. And I have a template file I'm going to show you guys right now. And this is a, my pre-processed function right here. So you can see that I can uh, change what's in there. Let's take a look at that template real quick. So this is the template that's going to fire off. It's nothing special here. It's that exact um, XML that we saw on the site. But you'll see that I've replaced uh, what actually gets output in the domain policies with my process policies uh, variable, which I do in my pre-process function. So this is going to output my default of all when you install this module, or you can hook into it and output whatever you want, change whatever is in policies. So we look back at that here. So here is where Drupal alter. So I'm saying, okay, if, if somebody else wants to hook into this with their module, go ahead, and here's the policies array that we you know, create up here. If that's, after that fires and any module tries to touch it or doesn't, if nobody touched it, I'm going to see that right here. So if empty policies, okay, nobody touched it, so I'm going to just default it to permitted cross-domain policies. It's not, so actually... That's right, I did it backwards. This one, by default, this does not allow anybody to access your site's content. Um, and as an example, let's take a look at what the output would be. Output. Oh, that's right, it's on the slides. I'm going to come back up one. So here's, oh, here's an example of what it will look like if you went to your sites all modules. Ignoring this top one, I'll cover that in a second. That's, I'm going to show you guys an example of me actually um, hooking into my, to my module. But you'll see a cross-domain XML um, module that will be available just like anything else. Nothing fancy there. Um, here is actually what it looks like. And I don't want to start the slideshow. I'm starting the beginning, so I'm just going to zoom in a bit on this. That's a little jittery. Okay, well, so cross domain by default, it's just going to output what I just showed you guys. It's going to be that basic one. It's just like permitted none. Um, but if we want to override it, then we have to we have to actually hook into my to my module. So let's look at that. So I created another function or another module, a custom module for my site. This site's called contribute. I just created a Drupal six site called a contribute. So I have a contribute custom module. Um, that's a naming convention, like you know. I, you got to follow. Um, and inside here, we've got 
I'm, out, I'm basically overriding using uh, the hook policies alter, which is my own hook, and I'm altering that hook, and I'm getting that policies variable. So I'm saying, nope, I actually want it to say all this stuff instead. So I only want flash.contribute.com and hr.contribute, just kind of threw stuff in to show you guys, whatever you want, you know, based on that documentation. Uh, so we've got a couple sites here. Let's take a look at what it looks like when I've actually run my module and install it. So that's when you get this down here. So after my module's installed, which is just for my site, I'm going to get this output, which is overriding the, the other one. Okay. So contributing the module, um, let's get into that. Uh, first of all, you're going to want to create a sandbox project on Drupal. Yeah. Yeah. Go back. So right here where it says Drupal alter, you check out that function. Like maybe look it up on Drupal, but it's basically just saying anything that implements this cross-domain policies, I'll pass you this variable if you want to override it. So this is your typical kind of hook interface. <clears throat> Um, let's see, so, so sand, the Sandbox project is basically, uh, I'm guessing everybody here has a Drupal.org account. If you don't, you should. It's free. Um, set it up. It's, it, you're going to need one. And then once you have that set up, um, you're going to add a project. Uh, sandbox projects are a little bit different than regular project nodes. Like if you go to, I don't know, Superfish or something, the module page, you have like all those like versions and stuff on it to download. With Sandbox, you're just going to... The URL is just the sandbox the username and the node, the node ID in, on Drupal.org that this project falls under. Um, you can't create releases, like, so that's why you don't have that, all those like release history on the bottom. The only way to get a sandbox project after you create it on, on Drupal is to use git. And you know, basically navigate to your folder on your sites directory, that your modules, uh, sites all modules, and then wherever you want it to go, just enter that <coughs> git command right in the command line. And... Uh, that should add it in there. Uh, let's take a look at that link I have as well. It's not this one. Uh, this is a little bit of info on obtaining Git access, so I'll get this in on the slides. Um, back here. So, again, get, get your account on Drupal.org set up, um, obtain git access, which is that page we were just looking at here. This tells you exactly how to do that. Um, there's a one-time approval process that you go through, and there's actually just a link, as you can see right here. When you're on your uh, user profile page, it'll look like, without the arrows, won't be on there obviously, but it'll look like this. Uh, and there's a, there's a tab for edit uh, on your profile, and git access. And then down here, you say agree to the terms, and then they'll, you'll have get access to Drupal.org, basically. And I can just say an agree and save, and then you'll have that access to your project. Now once, uh, once you actually save that and do get your get access, you'll have to obviously set up get on your box. And that's why I was saying, like, if you use that quick start uh, Ubuntu VM, it'll just have everything for get already installed for you, so you don't have to mess around with that. Uh, but you'll just enter these commands. Whatever uh, Drupal comes back and tells you on your account says, this is what you use. It tells you exactly what to do. Um, so I don't have a lot of detail in these slides because of that. So let's take a look at, actually, what's this next one? So, yeah, let's take a look at my actual account. So. so I have my projects here. This is my Drupal account. I've already uh, signed up for get access, and I have a project cross domain XML. Uh, one thing to note too is this project name has to match my module folder name that I created and my module name itself. So this actually takes me right to mine. Um, and if I look at this page, because I'm logged in, in the browser, it, it just tells you like if you go to my page, you guys can search for me, for, search for this right now. And if you come to this page, you're going to get this get. Uh, command right here, which you can add to your command, to your command line. <clears throat> um, 
and that'll actually, if you were to go to it right now and go into like sites all modules and then just run this git command, you'll get my, my uh, cross domain file, just like you would if you were to install it through modules. Well, actually, no, you still have to install it through modules, but you don't just download it from Drupal. This is the only way to get it. So. Uh, there's another option to be anonymous, because I guess there's, uh, I've just started using Git and contributing, so I, I guess some people like to use anonymous emails when they sign up, because basically your, your email and username is what identify you to Drupal, obviously. Your Git repository is identified by that. But you can use an anonymous one if you don't want people bugging you, I think is the idea. So Drupal will, uh, Drupal.org will, will tell you all this right after you get approved for Git. They'll give you all this info and say, here's what you can use if you want to be anonymous. <clears throat> okay, so setting up your sandbox. So there's another page for creating sandbox projects that just tells you the basics of it, but it's just basically you fill out that form on the add new project, which is over here. Go back. So I can add another project on mine. I only have one. And filling all that out, clicking the save, and then uh, click the version control tab. It's, it tells you how to do all that on here, basically. Um, when you actually do create your sandbox project, it's going to ask you several things, like what's your project type? Uh, it's a module for mine. So uh, what is the Drupal core, Drupal 7? Um, module category, there's a whole list of categories on there. I mean, I can actually let me just show you it on here instead of these darn slides. So let's just add a project or just look at the page. So here's your project type, module categories. You kind of got to pick where yours belongs. It's kind of your best guess. Um, obviously, this would be modules. I'm actually going to save this. Uh, what's your maintenance status? Are you just going to post it and run away, or are you going to stick around and see what happens? You know, <laughs> um, I, I'm going to run away. Um, development status uh, obsolete. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you can fill out however you want. You know, and that's kind of what that's going through. Um, if you have images, like if you go to certain module pages and you get like an image, that's just this right here. And then it gives you a little bit more. This is for the description. Uh, this all goes, again, on that, like, if you go to a certain module you're downloading for Drupal, this is all that goes on that page. This is what that is. Uh, and there's this other project resources, which I, I haven't actually played with, so I don't know exactly what that does, but it's something else fun to look at, I guess. Um, so I obviously gave mine a name. Uh, so once everything seems to work, uh, what do you do now? Um, there's a button on the projects page here. Actually, that's my authentication. So it's, if I go to my cross domain, I'm logged in, so I see this screen. Uh, apply for full project access. I haven't done that yet. I'm going to. <laughs> so look for this project. But basically, that's what you do. You click on this. You follow its instructions. I don't know, actually, if I want to click on it yet, because I don't know what it does yet. But basically, you're going to follow that. Once you're done, like everything seems good, you got your sandbox, you're like, I'm ready to go. Click on this and follow its instructions, and I'm going to be doing the same thing. Uh, obviously, um, wait to see what happens after you do try to submit it, see that they, because there was another session, I think, yesterday regarding, like, I tried to submit my project, and I keep getting kicked back. I, according to my CTO, if you submit a smaller module, but it's accurate, it's like, follows coding standards, uh, it does something very basic, but it does the job, it's, it's not stupid, it's like doing something people need, it's probably going to, it's probably going to get passed. You'll probably get vetted. Um, and then once you're vetted, you no longer need to get vetted anymore. You can submit any module. And they don't have to approve it, which is kind of dangerous, but um, that's, I guess that's how it works. Um, obviously, maintain your module, or if you're not going to maintain your module, um, try to find somebody else that will maintain it. Don't just leave it. Um, it's probably much better to have somebody aware of it. Or, you know, I think that this would, I hope that this is going to be pretty um, nice to have. I know a lot of people still use Flash, so I think that, you know, this should hopefully be nice. Hopefully, I'll be famous here soon. <laughs> Um, uh, closing thoughts, but you know what, I put a slide that passed this real quick. Um, this is some other resources that are, that give you a lot more depth into building modules that will go into like a lot more detail. Uh, buildamodule.com has some great build-a-module sessions, but you have to pay for them. Uh, Lullabot's a great 
uh, site for that too, a company that does that. I'm not sure if you have to pay for theirs. I'm guessing they have some free and some that you pay for. And here's some resources on Git if you want to install it yourself and you don't get the out-of-box quick start thing. Um, and GitHub if you want to have your own repository. Say you're doing, <clears throat> say you don't want everything to be on Drupal or your virtual box, you want to have a repository on GitHub and you can just use that. And it, there's obviously will be instructions on how to do that. Um, this is a quick session, so uh, do you guys have any questions on, on that? Sure. So the just a repository. It's kind of like SVN. We're like, <clears throat> you'll just say this file is, you know, or this folder directory is where I'm putting everything, and then you connect that with Drupal, basically, Drupal.org, and it's, oh, okay, that's the one I'm going to use. And so whenever you push changes up with the command line with Git, that's what it does. So. And I'm still getting familiar with it, too. So that's why I'm not going into too much depth on, on Git. I was actually hoping uh, Mario would be here, because I know he likes to jump in on that. <clears throat> Anybody else? Questions? I hope that helped a little bit. I know that there was some missing spaces here. And I wish that <clears throat> I had my VM working, because I could have gone through some of this on code. But you know, hopefully I still got you guys interested, at, at least. So, and look for my module. You know. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming by.